Welcome to uh, another session on the summit and we've got a corker today because we, we're going to do a live training with uh, a, a, frankly a, a living legend uh, in this community uh, in this space and uh, I, I know I've had a lot of messages uh, thanking me for getting Bill Jelen because you know Bill started everyone's uh, a lot most people's journey um, on Excel Bill Bill was there and, and kind of has ushered us all through in, in, in times of need with our you know Excel queries but when I when I was speaking to Bill Bill mentioned uh, one person in particular um, someone that you know Bill considers a, a very much a peer and and someone who's been around in, in, in this community for a very long time and, and has made some uh, amazing contributions contributions, uh, not just in the forums many, many years ago, but also has written um, some some of the most um, seminal articles um, on Excel. And if you go to contextures.com, which is Deborah Dalglish's site, you will find um, uh, you will find a whole bunch of his articles that, that he's written over the years. Um, and uh, I should mention his name. I'm talking about the one and only Roger Gauvier. Uh, uh, and Roger has been an Excel MVP for for a very long time. And he and today. Um, we can have a, a, a quick kind of a, an interview with him, but he, you know, he's on the cutting edge, and he, today he's going to give us a tutorial. Which, when he demonstrated it to me, it really blew me away. And it's to do with um, utilizing Excel's new dynamic array functions. And I, I, I know nothing about this, so it's going to be great to have Roger uh, build us a report which which does this. So um, I'm going to bring Roger in, Roger. Welcome to the summit. Hi, Sahel. Nice to nice to be with you. Great to have you here, and and we're both wearing blue, which is great. However, <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly envious of of your shirt, uh, as we can see on the label. It's got MVP written on there. Uh, mine has a Slazenger logo, so uh, <laughs> you can buy you know you can buy that for five quid uh, from the shop. But your one takes uh, it, it has to be earned. So so it's a privilege to have you here. Um, so, uh, Roger, um, let's just talk a little bit about, let's, let's quickly go into your journey a bit, because I think there's a lot of people who, who, who want to know, you know, how you got started in, in Excel, how long have you been using it? What, uh, you, you are a very sort of seasoned and experienced consultant. Tell us about how you got started working with Excel. Well, I guess it really started long before Excel, so hail, um, <laughs> I'm long enough in the tooth that I used the very, very first spreadsheet program written by Dan Bricklin, and that was called VisiCalc. Wow. And uh, that was a revelation. You could suddenly have columns of, and rows, and you could have numbers and do additions and subtractions. And suddenly, you know, a 12-month cash flow was possible with great ease. Yeah. And then I, that well, was way back. I don't know when that started. And then I worked through all the various uh, implementations of spreadsheets thereafter. So SuperCalc, Dopus123, and Bold and Quattro, and Multiplan, which was Microsoft's forerunner to Excel. Yeah. And then I worked with every single version of Excel right through to the very latest Office 365 with its own BizBang features. So I covered the whole gamut. But um, since 1996, I've been full-time as an IT consultant. Mm. All my work has been in Excel. Wow, amazing. And, and are you doing a lot of client work these days? I'm gradually trying to cut back. I think I've got to the stage in my life when I should take life a bit easier and have a bit more fun. <laughs> I think that's fun, and that's why I keep at it. But for... For some unknown reason, Microsoft invited me to become an Excel MVP back in 2007. That's a, it's a one-year award. I was awarded first on the 1st of July of that year, so it lasted to the 30th of June 2008. But I've been lucky enough to have been re-awarded every single year since. So I'm now doing my 13th year with Microsoft as an MVP, and uh, it's great because uh, you get to meet the product managers over at uh, Seattle mm. at Summit every year, in March of next year, next year, 
and then about all the great new features and things that we've got coming to us. And if you think we've got a lot, you want to see what is coming. Wow. Now, I'll tell you, otherwise I'd, I'd get my throat cut. <laughs> <laughs> you sworn to, did you have to sign some kind of NDA? Is that what Oh, yeah, saying? yeah. We, all of us MVPs, we signed that many NDAs that um, I think the Americans would come and march us off and we'd be incarcerated forever if we... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bill, whom you mentioned earlier, he, he's an MVP, of course. And, yeah. Uh, so uh, many others. Oz, who I know, is joining in this team as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and it's it's great to meet that bunch of people, you know, from all different parts of the world. Absolutely. What a what a what an incredible uh, com you know conversations you guys must have. Um, tell us where you live. Um, tell us where you're from. Uh, well, <clears throat> I was born in Cardiff, in South Wales, in the UK, um, but I now live on what was my uncle's farm, which was on the banks of the River Usk, Ooh. just didn't have to any. Yeah. So I sit looking out of my window at lovely grass fields with lambs grazing and sheep. Oh, wow. Uh, with uh, vegetable crops and soft fruit. I don't... Uh. I mean, myself, I own the farm, but yeah. we have a tenant who does own the farm. That's amazing. Can we, and after this, can you send a picture of what your view looks from outside? I'm just, I'm just, uh, uh, you know, it, it's amazing to, to be doing all this technical stuff and then you look out and you, and you see this, you know, this gorgeous sort of uh, pastures, green pastures and, and, and so forth. That must be nice. Yeah, well, that's, that's the advantage of the internet, isn't it? You know, uh, there you go, yeah. I sit here in the country and I can deal with people all over the world very, very easily. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my biggest traffic jam in the morning is if the cat gets in my way as I come down the stairs. Stop it now. Stop it, Roger. You're, make, you're, you're making the rest of us jealous now. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so um, tell us what you've got in store for us today. Well, I love everything about Excel. I really do. And um, just, well, it's just going on to general availability now uh, for the Office 365 users with something called Dynamic Arrays. And there are several new functions within Dynamic Arrays. I think there are seven of them. And Microsoft have totally rebuilt the calculation. Uh, so it's much, much faster. And for array formulae now, you always used to have to do control shift enter. Yeah. Uh, commit a, an array formula. But now there's no control shift enter. Everything is an array formula if you want it to be. Um, and I just want to use just three of those new functions to show how with just those three formulae you can build a uh, dynamic cross-tab report. Now, my favorite and my first go-to method for analyzing any set of data is always pivot tables. Yeah. Pivot tables, to me, they're so easy to do, so fast, nothing to do really, no form to type. Yeah. Uh, and I just love them, and that's what I use. But there are a lot of people who don't seem to like pivot tables, and there are some in this world, mainly the accountants. <laughs> oh no, we can't use pivot tables. And I say, why? And they say, oh, because it's like a black box. We don't know how the calculations are made, so we can't trust them. My usual answer to them is to say, well, you better go back to traveling with a horse and cart, because I don't understand the work of the modern internal combustion engine. You still use it and trust it to get it from A to B. But anyway, we can we can build the equivalent of a pivot table as a cross tab report using you know the existing formula like Suffix to do that to do the uh, the heavy grunting of the calculation. Yeah. But um, create it very, very easily. And the template I'm going to build today is such that once it's built, you can drop any data table into it that you want, and you don't have to change a single formula, and it'll work. And you can select what you're going to have as your column, what you're going to have for your row, and what you want to appear as the data. Well, I'm excited. You don't have to amend a single formula. 
Wow. And you're using just three formulas in this? Uh, three of the new ones. Three of the new ones, yeah. yeah but I'm also yeah. using some ifs. Um, yeah. And another old one called Transpose. And I'm also going to be using um, one which comes with an old Excel for macro, which is called Evaluate. Right. Which we've never, ever heard of. You can't type it in the cell. You can't say equals evaluate. But if you enter it into a named formula, then it will work. And it works very much like indirect, but I hate indirect really because it's a volatile function. Yes. I, avoid, I avoid them like the plague. Yeah. Although within the new Damnic array scenario, it's not too much of a, of a, of a burden. And I've done some time names, but you to show you, you know, the speed with indirect and the speed with evaluate. And evaluate is faster and non-volatile. And I have to thank my very, very good friend and uh, fellow MVP, um, <clears throat> Charles Williams. Uh, Charles Williams, who has a business called uh, uh, Decision Models, um, he's written all sorts of utilities and he has some for sale, fast Excel which will analyze where the bottlenecks are in your formulae and uh, how to speed things up. Wow. I discussed a lot of things with Charles and we looked at the evaluate and determined that evaluate was not a volatile function. Mm -hmm. Time is, I'll show later, a courtesy of Charles and Fast Excel. So I must have credit him. Thank you, Giles, and and I'm excited about that because I I've I've used Evaluate in in yeah in, in sort of my VBA, but not I've never used it in in a non VBA context. And and if you can give an alternative almost to 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 um, indirect, that will be that will be something for sure. Yeah, um, but, but I have to say, Sahel, that um, if you use Evaluate, you have to save your file as an Excel SM or an Excel SP. Ah, so if point. you have an organization where there's a restriction which says, no, we cannot have anything with macros in it, even though it isn't a macro, it comes from an old macro language, and if we try to save it as an X less X, it won't. So yeah. in that case, all you've got to do is switch, because I, I use it in named formulae. Yeah. And so you only got to just change, evaluate to interact. It'll work. It'll just be a fraction slower. Not much, just a fraction. Excellent. All right. So I think you are going to share your screen now, and then the magic will unfold. Well, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Here we go. Oh. You got it. Well, I can see it. It's looking looking crystal clear. I see the familiar uh, companies that provide us our uh, addictions, smart yeah. addictions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this this is what we're going to end up with. And obviously, all this stuff in red, I've only put there to help tell you about it. It's not necessary. But basically, we got the typical cross tab report where we got columns going this way and we've got rows going this way and we've got the value and all this has come from a data table. Now, I like to have things which are very, very flexible. So once I've written it once, I don't want to have to go and change any form to get a different view. So I've got a little drop down here and then I can see the list of any tables I've got. So that's the 2018 data. If I switch to 2017, don't blink, you miss it. Or, change now to 2017. Mm -hmm. I can say, well, instead of showing name as the uh, row item, let's go and choose uh, color as the row item. Bank. It's all wow. So now we've got the colors of the products and so on. And whether we want to look our data to be based on the value or we want to be based on the quantity. So let's so the number sold as opposed to the value sold. Yeah. And then, you know, you can sort these, the row and the column, either by value or by name. At the moment, row is being sorted by value. Is it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got ascending, right. 
Um, I normally have that descending. I like to see the best sales at the top. So you saw there was ascending or descending, you know, whatever you want. Can you, I'm a can great you, believer that totals, I hate totals to be at the bottom of the screen and to the right of the screen. In a long report, you've got to scroll down to see it. Yeah. Like my totals at the top and my totals to the left. Love it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's a preference thing but it's given um roger's had a lot of clients over the years it's interesting that you do it this way roger can you click into the table i'm curious to see what what is um not not in the data but in in the in your actual da report tab um right. just before you get onto the if we go back to that tab yeah and i'm just if we click into the table i'm just curious to see what the form what what shows up on the formula bar ah. before <laughs> before we go before we go well, in there. Th th that's the main formula that's doing the calculation right you see it right there okay yeah so i've got a named range called data yeah uh, data. and so i said sum ifs data where rho is equal to F12 hash, and I'll explain that in a moment. Yeah. And column is equal to I11 hash. Mm. So that's what's doing this thing. Now, what, but I need to explain these hashes, which I'll do as we start to see how these um, yeah. dynamic formulae work. Absolutely. Let's let's do it. Let's go. Let's crack on. So so th th there it is. That that's that formula which is actually doing it. Yeah. What I just put across there. I just use formula text. I don't know whether you're fam familiar with formula text. So all that cell says formula text of I twelve, but it just shows you what the formula is. Uh -huh. No, I've never seen that before. It's really useful not... in, in in training. It really it, is. It's very useful. Yes, that's. I like that one. And uh, of course, if you change your formula, then that changes. Because otherwise, if you if you type it, I found in <laughs> from a bit of experience, you've prepared something for a training session. Yeah. And you've got this hard written, as it were. Yeah. Then go and change your formula, and of course, the hard written stuff doesn't alter with it, whereas using formula text it does. Brilliant! It's that's um, great. That's a tip. Yeah. And. That's what's creating the dynamic array, but it's picking them up from this other sheet called DB lists. But let, let's go back a stage, if I may. Yeah. What we started with, this is um, TB 2017, and this mm -hmm. is TB 2018. Um, again, my idea is I always start my table name with TB and underscore. Because again, when you type in formulae, if you do TB, you're going to see a list of all your tables. Yeah, yeah. And then you can just quickly pick up what you want. So this, uh, there's 5,000 rows of data in this file, and there's 5,000 in this file. It's all totally synthetic data. I just use um, rand between along with some index matches to fill in people's names. Data, to generate the data, all the yeah. rest of it. So it's a, it, it, it's absolutely duff data. It really is, <laughs> but it's just something to be able to illustrate, which is not going to be sensitive. Great. That's what we're starting with. So let's look at these new functions which I've been introduced. They're called unique, and if you type in unique and then brackets what you want the unique of. I said, I'm in this cell here, I want the unique of table 2017 name. Okay? So that's saying, look down this 5,000 rows of names and show me the unique members of it. And there they are. So out of 5,000, we've got about 12 people. And if I do this one, which is unique product, it shows me that there are seven unique products. Now, the unique, it, it, that formula is only in that cell, and you can see it's quite dark there. Mm. If you look in the cells underneath, 
it's greyed out. It's as if there's nothing there. Uh -huh. What happens is the formula spills for the length that it needs to take. So and that's, I, that's the phrase that, being used for these formulas, the dynamic is that they're spill. spill. Yeah. Now, if I go and type in there, hello. Right. Mm -hmm. I get a hash spill error. So that's unique. It's telling me, oi, I want to come down here. <laughs> it's blocking me and it's in the way. Yeah. Um, there are various things of, with the, that the hash spill error gives. And there's a whole list of them. I'm not going to go into them all now because we won't get through all the other stuff. Yeah. If yes, delete that hello, bang. Now, it's not the hash fill error. Take the length it needs to. Okay? Brilliant. Yeah. Now, if that is the spill range, but if you see at the top here, that says B12 hash. So if you refer to B12 hash, that is the, the range. So I haven't got to say B12 colon B23. B12 hash is exactly the same as that because it knows that's an array formula and the hash sign tells it that's the anchor cell, if you like. That's the spill anchor. Mm. Everything below will be what belongs to that range. Right. So it's a, it's a new way of being able to define an area or to give an area to, without having to you know, use the old conventional way. Okay? Got it. There's another new fake feature called sort. And you can sort anything, but you can also pass unique to sort. Mm -hmm. so I said sort unique table 2017 name. So I've now got these names in alphabetic order. Fantastic. Now, so that formula there is sort unique, exactly as it shows there. This one here, I just said sort B12 hash, because B12 hash is that formula. <laughs> got it. And it's anchoring every all the data that yeah. it's in there. I love it. I love it so far. Yeah. Now, if I wanted to, it will default to being um, in ascending order. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if I said I want that to be... Uh, oh, sorry. I should have put another comma in there. Wow. I've now got it in descending order. <laughs> That's great, yeah. And so these are two new functions which are brilliant. And, yes. you know, you, just to show you here, I've just taken a small subset of the main table there. And run away, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> if I say... Sort TB. I call this table TB short. Um, TB short, comma five, comma one. That's saying sort it by the fifth column. One, two, three, four, five. So we can see now it's all in alphabetic order of product. Yeah. That's if we great. change, if we change, yeah, the the one to a minus one. And lo and behold, it's done the other way. Fantastic. Now, the full syntax for sort is, as we've got here, the array, the sort index, which column you want to sort by, mm. the sort order, and one is ascending, minus one is descending. There's also an option to do a sort by column or by row. The default is by row. But here, I've said, sort the whole table 
on uh, index one, and, but I said sort by one column. So now yeah. it's taken the columns, yeah. and those are now alphabetically sorted. So that's the original order, date, name, customer, etc. That has just sorted exactly the same data. But yeah, it's sorted alphabetically by the column heading. That's brilliant. That's yeah, yeah. That's we're, 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 we're not using those features. We're just using the quite simple sort in our thing that we're going to be doing today. Yeah, but there's also another one which is one which we are going to use. So <clears throat> now you can say. Sort by K12 hash using M12 hash. So here, that is my normal sort. Okay. Mm. Um, here, I've said sum the values from the table where the name is equal to K12 hash. So for each person, it's given the total value of their sales. Now, if I do a sort by and I make it descending, you can see Roger, I, I've shown the actual figures there, but looking at that list, Roger has got the highest sales, of course, because I'm the best. Of course, yes, Roger. <laughs> the, the day, uh, I don't think there was Rander AUs, I think. <laughs> rigged there was day. a slight bias introduced here. <laughs> and equally, my wife is Bandy, so she did <laughs> too. <laughs> anyway, but mm. th this, this is sorted with the lowest person's sales at the top. So poor old Barry one of my drinking mates. Um, Barry didn't do very well, and so um, his performance there has put him at the top of the list because he's the lowest sale value. Yeah. Don, another drinking compatriot, he's the next lowest, and so on, working down to Roger, who is the best. But if we sort it descending, then, of course, Roger comes to the top, Mandy second, and so on. So, sort by... Again, is a fantastically useful function. It is, yeah. I, I, it's something I do. You know, I fashion that in some way, shape, or form without dynamic arrays. But the the, the idea is that clearly they built these uh, formulae with, um, you know, based on feedback. Because this is what we do all day long. We make we create oh, absolutely, unique values. Absolutely, yeah. And you you can right. do it with your tables by using the little drop down and sort by any given column and all the rest of it. Yeah. When you're using a formula, you can't actually go and do the drop down and change it. So this yeah. is doing it without going anywhere near the, um, the the table headings. Brilliant. So these these are key to what we are going to use to build up this thing. Now, I mentioned <clears throat> earlier on we also going to use something called transpose. So transpose is straightforward. If if you took a, a series of names. And uh, if I put Roger, Fred, Jim, Harry, um, if I said to, uh, and we've got four, one, two, three, four, and I type in there equal. Transpose, and I say that right there. Right, it just puts it the other way down. Yeah, that's nothing to do with dynamic arrays. That's just what has always been. Okay. Yeah. But if I say transpose saw unique table twenty seventeen name, I've now got them going across the screen instead of down the screen. Brilliant. So that again, you can see it's got black for the formula. There, it's grayed out again. The formula does not exist in any of these cells. There's a shadow of what the formula is, but that is spilling across as far as it needs to go. 
Excellent. With yeah. product. I've just taken product instead and sent it out sideways instead of down the screen. And the same thing with color. Right? So now we've got the makings of what we want to do because we can say we can put our products going down that way. And then by using transpose, we've got our unique regions going that way. So all we need to do now to fill in the values is to say some ifs table 14 set 2017 value comma table 2017 product is equal to m8 hash that's m8 there mm -hmm. table 2017 region is equal to n7 hash which is that there so it's worked out that the total sales of product one in area or region west was 218,000 669 pounds. So we've given it what the value is to be summed, where we're going to get it from, what we're trying to pick it up by mm. product. But to say it's not to say by products uh, M8 to M14, because we said M8 hash, it says, okay, I know this is a spill range. So I'll do it for each of the ones in that range. So again, this formula does not exist in the other cells anywhere. There's only one formula that's doing all those calculations. That's amazing. It gets grayed out. Mm. And again, if I go and type in there, hello, it says, hi, I don't like it. I can't fill in all of the area that I need to for doing these figures. So get rid of it, please. And back to come. Fantastic. Now, I think it's magic. I really, yeah. really think it's magic. It is magic, yeah. If you think about how it's, it's so much, there's so much multitasking going on there in one formula. It's, it's quite remarkable. Yeah. yeah. But you see, I think I told you when we, <clears throat> when we spoke uh, earlier, Sahil, that I'm an exceptionally lazy person. <laughs> and... I, okay, that's all you need to do to go and produce uh, a cross-tab report, okay? But to get this cross-tab report down here, I have to go and change that formula. That formula there is saying, okay, the first part's the same, we're going to use value, but I've got to go and amend the formula to change it to name, and I've got to change the second criterion from region to color. I'm going to change where they're located, and that's that's hard work. I can't be I can't be doing that. <laughs> that's your I, whole work day gone. Yeah, I mean, oh God, you know that's that's just too much, too much. So this is where we come to. <clears throat> I wanted to have some way of being able to select the different parts of the cross tab report. Okay, because the cross tab report has basically got columns, it's got rows, and it's got data. Mm. Yeah. So I want to be able to have a drop down here and be able to select which what my source is, and I want a drop down to be able to select what I want to be my row item and what I want to be my color item and what data do I want to summarize and I can choose quantity or value no point in doing price because that would be a, a nonsense so having selected for a drop down it would be nice if we could just use a formula like unique c2 and quotes open square brackets quotes and <laughs> yeah. c3 and yeah quotes etc but that just returns tb2017 product because it produces text and unique cannot work with that right so we need to have something that turns the text into something unique can understand and use 
Good old indirect, yeah. And we can do that. Back to spelling there. We can do that with indirect. So unique, indirect, C2 and will produce us that. Fantastic. But as I said, indirect is volatile, and I avoid it like the plague. Can you can you explain why why do you avoid it like the plague? Because it's an opportunity here to to hear hear in, in in the words of an experienced person why you want to avoid volatile functions. Right. Well, with indirect, if you change any value anywhere within your workbook, which is being referenced by an indirect function. Mm. Everything has to be recalculated. Mm. Every single thing gets recalculated. Whereas normally, with formulae, you have... I'm just have a sip of water a second. Me too. Normally, uh, when you make a change, <clears throat> cells are as uh, being dirty. And... Um, the calculation chain knows which cells it needs to go and recalculate as a result of that change, and it's seldom all the formulae on the sheet. But when you use a volatile function, and indirect is volatile, and today is volatile, and various other ones, if you make any change with anything which involves those in then the calculation chain has to be recalculated totally. And that's what slows things down. And if you've got, you know, there's some people with huge spreadsheets with lots mm. of direct in them, and they wonder why it runs like a dog. <laughs> do well, you think it's, uh, do you think the new calculation engine in, in Excel that you've alluded to in 365, is, it, does that sort of um, mitigate some of that? Or? Oh, it, it, it definitely does. And mm. I'm sure whether it's as a result of only having the cell, uh, having the formula in the single cell, so there's only yeah. one indirect there, even though it's all down through here. I don't know whether it's that, or it's just the efficiencies in the calculation engine with indirect. But yeah. it's not as bad in the modern stuff as it used to be. That's good to know, but I agree, we, should, we, shouldn't, we should strive for efficiency where we can. Always, yeah. always conserve processing power. That's right. Yeah. So my alternate <coughs> was to use this evaluate. Um, <clears throat> so I say, which is an XLF. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Right. They were a way used to automate Excel before the advent of, M of VBA. And wow. The all of those functions are still supported right through to the very latest version which I've got on here. Now, my version, I'm on what's known as Insiders Fast. So I get new versions of, uh, of Excel uh, every week. Um, and so therefore, I'll have features inside my package that I'm showing you here today that won't even be in some of the normal subscription uh, versions. Wow. Uh, there, 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 there's different there's different levels of a subscriber and you can you can opt to go on to an insider fast program or there's an insider program or you can go for just normal and you get it with the normal cadence but um the microsoft have started doing this insider fast which is great because we then have a sample of people out there in the world who are testing the very very latest so they get the feedback get things right before it goes on general release. Brilliant. Okay. But what I'm saying is evaluate is still supported right through to what is the latest version on the, uh, which is on my machine at the moment. Now, Microsoft have said they do not guarantee to support those Excel four functions right through forever. Right, yeah. And that's fair enough, that's fair enough. But since they haven't dropped it already in about 30 years, I don't see them <laughs> being in any rush to drop it now. Yeah. But, but if, you, if, you, if you built something using this evaluate 
and you found that suddenly there's a new version that doesn't work, then just switch to it direct. Got it. There we oh, go. I, yeah. So, um, typing that into a cell, evaluate C2 and brackets and C3 and brackets, you can't type into a cell. It, it, it just would turn up like that. Right. You put it into a named, oh, I can't spell name, named formula called test, for example, where we said test equals evaluate alternate in my sheet name, um, C2 and brackets and alternate C3 and brackets. Then it would work, because then when you type into a cell, equal test, what that does, that spills all 5,000 values from <laughs> that table. Yeah. yeah. That's the whole lot spilled out. But if we do a unique test, that's that. Now, what do I mean by named formula? Yeah, that was my question. I've never heard of that. Oh, named ranges? Yes. All yeah. long, but named well, formula. Well, na na named ranges, <laughs> when you really think about it, Aha, I see. They're, I not, see. they're not ranges at all. But yeah. formulae which reference a range. This is true. This is very true, yeah. So I tend to think of them more as named formulae than named ranges. Right. Um, yes, if you had something like VAT, V-A-T, which is our UK uh, taxation, yeah. um, you could actually point to a cell which held the value of 20%. Mm. Or you could, you could create a, a thing which is called that, and you could put in uh, uh, equals 20%. So that is just, that is a named range, if you like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But these are all formulae. If you look at what, let me just stretch this out a little bit. Yeah. There was a formula. Yeah? Yep, yeah, you're right by definition. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, they are. So formulas. this test, which is the one I wrote for this, holds a formula which is evaluate alternate C2 and bracket and alternate C3 and bracket. Now, C2 is up here, so that's TB2017, and C3 is. And so when we put equal test in the cell, test says, oh, I've got to go and evaluate that. And it says, oh, that evaluates to table 2017 product. So I'll spill you all the products from that particular table. But then giving test, passing that to unique, says, okay, well, I'll just give you only the new unique items from that 5,000. Fantastic. Uh, that is very clever. Hmm? <laughs> this is where I go on to talk about it. Okay. Um, so a complete list of all the name formulae that I've used. They refer in the main to two main sheets, DV lists and DA report of the final solution. Again, my formulae, or my named formulae, I start with an underscore. Again, because it's so easy to find them then when you're doing um, building up using the, um, oh, the formula manager, you know, because yeah. uh, once you just put the uh, underscore, you see a list, list, a list of all your underscore names. So, underscore tables, is just simply DV lists E5, because on DV lists 5 there uh, is the start of the thing. And then index DV lists column E, count A, the number in that column, oh sorry, it's this one, sorry, uh, number in that column plus 4. Okay? So right, yeah. it gives me a dynamic range for tables, hmm. which I can then pass to my drop-down. 
So that has a DV of tables in it, which would give me uh, that data to is in there now taking it away. So I see, again, an example where I've changed something since creating this. But anyway, I've also pushed it down one row, so that's why that's, that fact is actually slightly wrong at the moment, but don't worry. But underscore TBL is evaluate DV list B3 and headers. So I just wanted a list to be able to get all of the headers to be able to pass to each of these, to be able to select what I want from my product, what I want from my color, and what I want from my value. Okay? Yeah. Now, I've also created some other named formulae. Source, which is evaluate DA report C3. So that would tell me that it would be um, the table 2017. Row will tell me which item from the table it's going to be used for the row, what's going to be used for the column, and what's mm -hmm. going to be used for the data. Because then I can make my formula actually very, very, very short, which is what I'd like. Yeah. Easy to read. Some ifs. What am I summing? Data. Where row is XXX, whatever I want to give it. And column is YYY -Y -Y or whatever I want to give it. Yeah. I'm a great believer in using um, even hidden rows, hidden columns, whatever. Yeah. To steps to make formulae shorter and more readable. I, yeah. yeah. When, there's, when there's massive, long <laughs> uh, sheet Best names. And, yeah. Oh, God. And it drives me to distraction. <laughs> because that's how you make your mistakes. You really, really do. So uh, narrow it down into little bites. Yeah. And you'll then be far more accurate in your work. And in actually, and I, I just want to stop you there for a second, Roger, because yeah. I, I think it's so powerful that you, uh, as an experienced person in your capacity, uh, an MVP is saying, you know what, you should be using um, hidden, um, you know, helper columns. Helper columns, yeah. Yeah, because I, 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 I'm guilty of, of sometimes eliminating the helper columns. And, and, I'm, and I admit, when I go back sometimes six months later and, and, and try and audit a, a piece of work I've done, I'm lost. And so it, it's great. Uh, and I think it's a bit of comfort to people who are not that advanced as well. That actually just don't worry, just stick to your, your helper columns. That's great. Thank you. Carry yeah. on. No, well, because, again, I don't care. I, I'll have I hide columns all the time with stuff from my clients. Yeah. Most of the time, I just shut off column and row headers. Right. Yes, you have done. There's no, there's no need for them to see them. Yeah. They're, 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 they're immaterial for them. They're only using it. And if they look at the table, well, I usually shut, I shut the... Um, the grid lines as well. Yeah. The grid lines off as well. Um, um, yeah, and just to point out, I, I don't want to see all that rubbish. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. If you're dealing with a client, you're, you're right. You, we shouldn't assume clients uh, know a lot about Excel and care about a lot of it. Also, yeah. just, just just to point out, I, I love your um, your heavily customized toolbar. It, it's it's oh yeah, the the, 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 the the QAT. I'd be lost without that. Yes, and a lot of the time, I. Um, I uh, collapse. Yes, to get that, maximize your space. Yeah. And then, yeah, give, give me a bit more screen estate. Yeah. And then most of the things I use often are on the QAT. So if I want to open a file, I go there. If I want a new file there, if I want to save it, if I want to save as, then that tells me where I am, um, and so on. So all the things I use frequently are on there. So yeah. have to have the ribbon open all the time. I, I love taking a peek at um, kind of experts like yourself. So you see the 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 way that you you use uh, Excel and your own workflow. That's it's always interesting. That's a good one. And I, and, I, and I like it 
to be below the ribbon as well. I suppose the default is for it to be above the ribbon. Above the ribbon, right, okay. You know, you, you can see on the thing, where do you want to show it? Yeah. Ribbon or below the ribbon. And I always have mine below. Partly, it's, it's, it's shorter movement of the <laughs> cursor to get to it. As yeah, you really are lazy. I didn't realize just how lazy. <laughs> oh, I told you, I told you. I am the laziest person on earth, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if I can find an easy way of doing something or getting out of it, I do. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's move swiftly on, otherwise we won't complete this. Uh, right. That's the, the report. And again, I, 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 well, I haven't shut off the heading there, so there we are. That's how I would be looking at a report. But I wouldn't, you know, a normal report would have all this red stuff on there. Yeah. And this is immaterial to the report itself. It's just the, the selection. Uh, this here, the, what the title for the report is, alters dynamically. That's just a thing building it up out of whatever it's, it, it's finding. We can look at that in a moment. But lots of the things on here are referring to this sheet here, which is called DV Lists. So that's where I'm picking up those unique tubble, and tubble was the headers mm. on the table. Yeah? Yep. So because that's called table 2017, underscore tubble is the headers for that, and that's yeah. transpose unique. So the headers would be going across the page, so if we transpose them, we can got them down the page. So there we, there we see a list of them. Excellent. If I brought another table and dropped into this file, if I go put its name there, it will appear in the list. And if I select it, it'll come there. So that cell is being picked up from DA report C2. So whatever I've selected here, gets reflected there. Mm. Therefore, the headers that appear here will be dependent upon what table I have selected. Fantastic. Now, these two tables both happen to have the same headers, so it wouldn't make any time. I can't show you a difference there, but um, I, I, I've got another one which we'll, we'll pop in in a moment just so you can see. Now, again, just like we talked before about being able to do this sort by. There's my sort unique row item, okay? And row is whatever has been selected there. Yep. Mm, yeah. So that sorts it, and because row at the moment is saying color, there we've got it sorted. And it is sorted descending because there's a plus one there. This formula says sort unique row, comma, comma, G14. G14 is minus one. Uh -huh. Because that's, yeah. Value is what I've selected. I'm sorry, selected um, descending. So because I wanted it descending, that has picked up. F3 is ascending, it would be one. It's otherwise, make it minus one. Brilliant. It's yeah. ascending, it said, okay, minus one. So, that there is doing the sum ifs on whatever we got here. Yeah? Yeah. And that there is, we said, because it's descending uh, by value, We've got it going down that way. Brilliant. And then we've got the same thing here for dealing with the column section. Yeah. So depending on what we've selected on our report sheet, so there you are. You see, the, the sorting of the row, so let's go with three following. G16 is sort unique row. H16 is some ifs data for row G16. Mm -hmm. I-16 is sort by G-16, or sort G-16, hash, 
by H16 hash, which is the the values. Yeah. And then you, you we have again the G40. The game is either ascending or descending, whatever we want to have. So that's what's sitting behind here, so that we can have on this page my simple formula, which I like. Some ifs, what one of some data, where rho is equal to F12 hash, and where column is equal to I11 hash. So. Let's put the headers back on so that you see that. F12 hash is that. Now, what that says, if the left of E3 equals N, name, mm -hmm. use DV lists G16 hash, otherwise use DV list I16 hash. Right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, and similarly, this one here, if the left of E4 is N, then transpose DV list L16 hash. Otherwise, transpose DV list N16. Yeah. Very clever. Very, it's, just, it's simple. It's just, sim it's just a simple, elegant way of doing it. I love it. Yeah. And then the other thing I did, see, which is the thing that you can't do with pivot tape. I mean, the much I love them. Um, with a pivot table, I couldn't go and do an insert in the middle of a pivot table. Yes. So what I did, having got the cross tab report, and because I'm just going to read that again a moment, um, and I said I like to see my totals to the left. I just put there some ifs data row F12. So that's just the total, regardless of what the product is. Yeah. Yeah. And similarly, I got my totals up here. That's the sum ifs for just the products. Um, and then that's just total data, simple sum data. That's the total value of all. Well, we're on quantities here. Let's go back to values again. Uh, uh, let's let's go. Let's have a bit more. Let's have uh, let's have uh, uh, oh, let's have months as our row item. Do we? Right, how about that? Um, I've got the months with the month number in front of them, so that alphabetically they'll sort. But because got it, yeah. <laughs> Because I said sort by value. Yeah. Again, I love it. It's such a clever way of doing that. I like that. <laughs> They're not. But anyway, um, but as you can see, by just changing these, the whole shape of the report just adjusts automatically. I mean, it's amazing. If we go there, we go and change that to region. Bang. So we've got an entirely different shape report. Now, the one thing that the new dynamic array stuff doesn't do at the moment and asking for is it won't do the reformatting. So what I've done is I formatted a whole host of cells going out this way and mm. the page to be my number format that I want. Right. So that as it spills out or down, <laughs> yeah. I get my nice formatting. Uh huh. I see. Okay. It would be yeah. lovely. It would be lovely if this had to say spill out more and yeah. where I'd formatted that it would automatically pick up the format of the rest of it. Do you, do you hear that, Microsoft? Uh, <laughs> that's good. That that it's good feedback, though. Um, I, I yeah. think they're looking. To, well, yeah. I think I think Joe McDade, who is the who is the PM, who's been really running the dynamic arrays. Um, Joe works with John Campbell in the team over there, and um, he's heard it loud and clear from all of us MVPs. Have no fear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, all I'm just saying to you there is what I've done. I've cheated because I've gone and just formatted more cells than I need to make sure that it comes comes right. Um, so if my month, I'll, let's just sort of see if I say sorted by name. 
and that some it's thought in ascending. You'll see January, February, March. But we've got the numbers there because otherwise, if you saw alphabetically, you know, you know what happens with months. You get them all yep. on <laughs> April, followed by August, and so on. And and I guess and I guess if if that's one of the first thing that come came to my mind when you showed me the the, the minus one and the the one that is is that will there in the future possibly be some kind of custom sort capability as well where you know like a, a the number two refers to a particular uh, sort list that you've a custom list that you've created that's something I guess for them to think about. Well, that's exactly what sort by does, isn't it? Because sort by allows you to go and sort by a set of data or a range, which is yeah. nothing to do with the thing itself. Aha. Uh-huh. I, I slightly missed that. In, uh, I, well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, sort by. Yeah. Um, so we're sorting this list of names here by the values which are which are completely not missed that point completely yep. missed that point roger so i'm red oh, well, I, 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 i'm glad you i'm glad you went back to it <laughs> <laughs> so i think basically that's it oh i, I did say i'd show you something about timings yeah <laughs> oh yeah this is interesting i'm, I'm keen on this um, and this, this is from this is from giles right charles charles sorry excuse charles, me charles. Yeah. um so Using indirect in the name, um, and then also using it in the DA formula, these are, the, you know, I did some timings, and these were the average speeds we got for um, a recalc to the sheet, an automatic recalc. And as you can see, indirect compared with evaluate, look. Yeah. That, right? Wow. Uh, Something called full calculate. Um, there you've got your figures for, I mean, these are milliseconds. So, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we're not talking, you know, <laughs> waiting 41 seconds for something. Yeah. It's <laughs> thousands of a second. But look at the speeds we get with evaluate compared. But there are there are instances though if I think of places where I've worked, like in investment banks where, where I've worked with traders, and actually, it is very important that things refresh in in the milliseconds. It, it really, oh, absolutely! Where where absolutely. You, you've got to make very quick decisions because you're getting multiple data feeds. So 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 yeah, that 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 definitely has its place. So that's a, a, a fantastic uh, a bit of benchmarking there. Yeah, and the the other advantage that this dynamic cross tab report has um, compared with the pivot table. Um, now, why that split like that is because um, these people only belong to that region, obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, similarly, if I put name for both, we'll just see it going diagonally down the down the page. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, you'd never want to see it like that, of course. Um, but if I got put this now back to product right um so, and that's what he was talking about compared with pivot tables so what, what data are we looking at at the moment uh, we're on 2017 okay right paul if i don't make the value of that sale there uh, it's going to put uh, Huge figure. Uh, figure. Oh, well, we didn't look to see what it was before, but <laughs> but that would have jumped. Yeah. Automatically, the pivot table. You'd have to do a refresh before. Yeah. It reflected in the figures. Absolutely. Yeah. It goes so we just remember, like right, that. That's six hundred sixteen thousand. Yeah. If we go back there and we undo what we did and go back to the report. Oh. 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 Wait, what's happened there? Calculation automatic. Oh. 
pregnant pools. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I've done there, but hey, but well, it, it, it does automatically adjust. Well, we're doing this live, so we, you know, th- these are the things that happen in in, in live. <laughs> but but the point the point is made. Um, I mean, we, we yeah. I mean, as someone like me who's traditionally not a fan of pivot tables, this is this is great, uh, and um, really, I guess more than anything, this is a glimpse into the future. Because um, although you know we, we're doing it now, pretty much on the eve of twenty twenty, a lot of um, companies don't quite have the uh, you know dynamic arrays yet. And oh no, no, yeah, there's, there's very few people will have it at this point in time. Yeah has now gone GA, general availability. Yeah. It will be working its way out through the whole of the customer base. Excellent. So that's only good. For, only for Office 365 users. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Excel 2016 and Excel 2019 will not get it. Aha, uh-huh. interesting. I did not know 2019 won't get it. But, no, um, 2019 unfortunately missed the cut. Right. That, uh, that, that got cut around about the May time of uh, last year. Yeah. And the dynamic arrays were announced to the world in about September last year at ignite. Uh-huh. So it, it, yes, failed to make the cut. And, of course, that is the thing. When we used to have only the box sets, Mm. um, we used to find it quite frustrating because we'd be over in Redmond and we'd see lovely new things that they were showing us. And then sort of uh, Excel 2010 come out. Yeah. Say, ah, that's not in there. And, well, no, I'm afraid it wasn't ready at the time we had to commit and therefore, you have to wait until 2013 <laughs> before you got those features. Yes. But yeah. that's one of the reasons they went, or probably the main reason they went across onto the subscription model was because with the subscription model, changes can get pushed out much more quickly. You haven't got to wait for a three-year cycle. No. Now, 2019 was very, very unfortunate because they had to commit for what they were going to have in 2019 before they were ready to tell the world about dynamic rays. Um, well, uh, us in the MVP community knew about it already. Again, yeah. it's sworn to secrecy, so we couldn't say anything about it. It's just one of those things. So yeah. it, it, it unfortunately will not be in 2016. It won't be in 2019. Great. Okay. Subscription model, you will get it. Yeah, and and it's quite inexpensive if if you want to just have a play around with it as well. Um, For sure. Yeah, and uh, uh, highly recommended. Um, but but yeah, as I said, this is a, this is fantastic. It, it, it's definitely um, you know it's the future of kind of building bespoke reports. I think if, especially if you want to move, you know, you, you're not keen on using pivot tables. There's just so much power and flexibility um, with this. I'm definitely going to be using this uh in the future who knows when the companies i work in will 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 get this but um it's definitely definitely a great thing so um roger honestly a big heartfelt thanks i feel like i should give you a little um i'll give you a little standing ovation i want to stand (laughs) (laughs) so i so i i'll I'll switch my screen back to you now (laughs) um yeah, there we are. I can see you now. <laughs> and and it, it, no, it really, uh, you, you laugh, but a bit, it, what you've done is just brilliant. And as I said, it's a glimpse into to, uh, the future. So it's a glimpse into how probably most likely you'll be building if you're an analyst or an accountant. This is, this is a, gr- a phenomenal way of building reports. Uh, and as I said, you can use it with any table. Let's just prove that to you one second. There's another set of data altogether. Yeah. Copied in to a sheet called other data. I can't remember what I called it now. TV goods. Okay. So if I go here, oh, not there, sorry. And I add TB underscore goods there. Oh, I said RB. Roger, learn to type. <laughs> 
If I now go... Oh, hang on. We've got to share your screen here, right? Oh! <laughs> I was imagining it because I've been looking at it now, so I, I was there with you, but let's... Okay. So there's, I've got another tab called Other Data. Yeah. And on there is a table which is called TV Goods. So I went to DV Lists and I just put in TV Goods. So if I now go to VA Report, I can now go and select TV Goods. And whoa, it all, wee, wee, what's happened? Well, of course, the rows and the columns aren't the same. Yeah. So what are. Oh, God. Oops. Sorry, it does work, I promise you. I've done something. <laughs> we believe you, Roger. Live. We are where, live where I've been just playing with some of these things as modern to make it easier yeah. to go through and show you the stages, I've, uh, I've obviously messed it up. I do apologize. Very not much. at all. Not at all. We, we, what you've done, what you've shown us is, is incredible. Um, well, but I uh, say, the, the, the point I was making is that having built this as a template, you can just take it, drop any table in there you like, and it will work without you altering a single formula. Fantastic. So it's, it's like a template on steroids of, of sorts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Roger, if people, are you, are you active on social media? I know we had this. Is there any way people can follow you in your musings? And do you, do you, are you involved in that? So, hell, we're back to the initial statement. I'm a lazy person. <laughs> 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 and I'm, I'm too long in the tooth to get yeah. all this Twitter stuff and uh, Facebook and uh, all the rest of it. But um, the, the other place that the other place that I'm, I'm going to direct people, I'm going to put a link to um, Deborah's site and specifically yeah. to where your articles are. So I think that's a great if, if, if you're looking to get more into the mind of Roger, then that's a great place to, to go and, and, and learn stuff there. But uh, and again, even my own website, I, I started creating one about oh, 15 years ago. I think I got as far as putting an opening page, and that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think even that works, though. I think it's out of date. So I told you, I'm lazy. I'm just totally lazy. <laughs> and and despite being lazy, Roger's one of the 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 sort of the most prolific uh, Excel MVPs there there is. So um, there's a, there's a big lesson in there somewhere there for everyone, I think. <laughs> um, uh, Roger, uh, thank you so much. I, I unfortunately, sadly, it's time to go. I could I could you know stay here and and do this for, for, for hours and just chat to you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, but I, I've got to I've got to get the the summit out there as we as we're doing this session lo, you know live today. So it's going to go out shortly. And I think I don't want to deprive you anymore of being out in on on the farm and uh, getting away. Oh, from I won't I won't be out on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's actually pouring now with rain here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we we got this little thing called an election going on. So oh gosh, yes, it is. And cast a vote. <laughs> Just there you go. That that's how live we are. This is going out on the twelfth, and 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 it is election day, and I've got to go yet and put in the old vote as well. So yeah, well, yeah. good luck with that. I hope that goes well, Roger. And 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 we we'll, we will stay in touch. And um, thank you once again, Roger. Thank you ever so much. It's, it's been a real pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Uh, all I can do now is wish you a very very. Merry Christmas and oh. best for the new year. And to you, and to you, a Merry Christmas and a, and a great new year. Happy New Year to you, too, Bill. Oh, uh, Roger. Okay. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye.